Chances are, if you were a child of the 90s, you probably witnessed the birth of Cartoon Network. Not only did you see a network born out of necessity and innovation, you also got a front row seat to being on the ground floor and witnessing TV animation being brought back to prominence. Roughly two years and some change after Cartoon Network's inception in 1992, Hanna-Barbera's last president, Fred Seiber, had the foresight to push animation even further by putting the creative reins back in the hands of the people who knew it the best, the animators. The idea in retrospect was quite simple. Give the folks that worked at Hanna-Barbera Studios and Cartoon Network a shot at getting their work on the airwaves. If it was good, it got picked up and turned into a series. During this initiative, that started under the banner of World Premiere Tunes, launched the careers of animators that would go on to not only change animation forever, but would also be a direct link for inspiration to future animators forever. We would end up seeing the World Premiere Tunes, later coined What a Cartoon, hosted by Space Ghost on Space Ghost Coast to Coast on February 20th, 1995. We would see the debut of Craig McCracken's Powerpuff Girls. In this short, we meet Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, three elementary age girls that were created by okay. Professor Utonian. In an effort to create the perfect little girls, the professor actually ends up breaking a jar of Chemical X, thus giving our favorite grade school crime fighters superpowers. During this pilot, Meet Fuzzy Lumpkins, we see Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup grading a jam contest. During the contest, we are introduced to Fuzzy and his meat jam. Needless to say, he doesn't win, which causes him to go absolutely bananas and uses a meat gun on Townsville that literally changes everything into meat. Hilarity ensues when the girls are called by the mayor that's a steak to take on Fuzzy in an all-out brawl. Bubbles gets one of her ponytails during this fight turned into a piece of meat and he effectively goes Super Saiyan on Fuzzy. We see the show end with Fuzzy becoming a burger and the mayor staring at this burger, still a piece of meat. This would end up being such a solid start to the 48 shorts that would come next. The next up is the first short that was actually picked up by Cartoon Network and greenlit into a series, Dexter's Laboratory, created by Gendy Tartakovsky. This short changes introduces us to a red-headed boy genius that has a secret lab built behind the bookshelf in his modern suburban home. I can only imagine what that power bill was. Being a dad myself, you know when everybody's touching the thermostat anyways. We see Dee Dee, Dexter's older sister, slyly entering his room and his laboratory. Dexter's working on a remote that has the ability to change people into animals. Not only does Dee Dee startle the hell out of Dexter, she also what does what she does best and ransacks his entire lab. Shortly thereafter, she catches Dexter with her dolly on an operating table, performing God knows what, really. Uh, this sends Dee Dee into an absolute rage where she backs down Dexter and then gets the remote into her hands. Many animal changes come, you know, Dexter gets turned to a rabbit, eventually a tortoise, we see gorillas, elephants, you know, it's lions, tigers, bears, oh my, sorry. Uh, and you really get to flush out the dynamic of Dexter and Dee Dee. We actually end up seeing them sitting down with their mom at the breakfast table, eating a meal, and she's none the wiser that her two loving kids are turned into mammals. Dexter was one of those shows that I remember watching and thinking, wow, this is dip this is like nothing that I've ever seen before. And if we're being completely honest, I was a six-year-old kid when this happened. There was a lot of things I hadn't seen yet, but I knew just deep down inside that this one was special, even back then. Next, <laughs> next up is one of those shows that I look back on and just ask myself, how the hell did this one get past standards and practices at Cartoon Network? We're talking Cow and Chicken's pilot, No Smoking, created by David Feast. Now, the show hands down should be on everyone's Mount Rushmore for Cartoon Network. Cow and Chicken was so funny. It was so wild. It was so out there. It was... I can't put words into it. It was just amazing, right? So it was brilliantly written. It, the art style was breathtaking. Just having a cow and a chicken as a brother and sister with human parents is downright genius. It doesn't make sense on paper, but when you watch it, it's magical. Now, this pilot revolves around Chicken. 
he's the older of the two, and he's sitting in front of the TV just trying to veg out. His little sister Cal wants nothing more than the attention of her older brother. That's when she starts to nitpick and just really get under the skin of her brother. Now anyone with a little sibling, brother, sister, what have you, I guarantee you you can feel this on a whole different level. And this is one of those scenes that it really feels like it was life imitating art. We end up seeing Cal trying to blackmail Chicken with their parents by saying, hey, Chicken smokes. You know, he does the whole thing, nah, I don't smoke, and then she literally pulls out an ashtray with cigarettes still smoldering. This is my favorite scene, or one of my favorite scenes through this entire pilot. As she kind of finagles her way for Chicken to play with her, she ends up turning into her alter ego, her superhero, Super Cat. Now right here, there's a fun little fact about David Feast that you guys might not know. David actually speaks fluent Spanish. The guy that would go down and voice Cow Chicken and the red guy, which was originally named the devil in this pilot, uh, Charlie Adler, didn't know Spanish at all. So David had to phonetically give him the words in Spanish so Charlie could actually mimic them. Breathtaking, really, really think about it. Right after this, we're introduced to the devil as he is trying to abduct Chicken and bring him down into the bowels of hell by offering him some cigarettes. At the behest of Cal, Chicken actually follows everything your parents tell you not to do for stranger danger. Follows the red guy, right? He takes him to hell. Yes, this is a Cartoon Network show still. The devil at the time, later to be no named as the red guy, uh, is actually bringing a chicken to hell. Super Cal comes to the rescue though. She jumps down, she puts the hooves and the udders to the red guy and effectively saves her big brother. Now, another fun fact about Cow and Chicken. This show was spun out of a bedtime story that David would actually read and come up with to his daughter. The next show on our docket is Johnny Bravo, created by Van Partible. Johnny Bravo follows around an Elvis-inspired character that has an ego that matches the size of his chest and his biceps. He has never had a shot he did not shoot with the ladies, and it tends to get him in a little hot, hot water. Quite often, it backfires magnificently. In our first appearance of Johnny, we see him visiting the zoo and seeing a female zookeeper distraught over their prized gorilla getting out. Johnny lays on the charm extra thick, and while explaining he... Johnny Karate, of all things, is a master of all martial arts until he is squashed by his one weakness in the fight game, a sumo wrestler. Hands down, my favorite scene during this pilot. Johnny eventually meets up with a gorilla who is intelligent as hell and weasels his way out of every encounter to not only be stuck up by a would-be robber with his finger gun. He is ultimately returned to the zoo and Johnny, at the end of the day, like every episode, doesn't get the girl. Now out of all these shorts, this is where I think I laugh probably the most. It's really hard to pick an absolute favorite or not sound biased because I'm such a fan of Gendy. Gendy is my guy. However, Johnny Bravo is one of those shows from the get-go that it knows who and what it is. It's not trying to change the world. It doesn't have a moral at the end of the story. It's just there to make you laugh and have a great time. Courage the Cowardly Dog is the last of the five shorts of the 48 that are the most well-known in the Winter series. Courage, created by John Dilworth, is about a dog that was abandoned as a pup and adopted by Muriel. They live in the middle of nowhere, literally, and creepy stuff happens, and it just happens to be that it's up to Courage to save the day. We are introduced to our hero, Courage, when the short opens, and he is sitting on the lap of his one true love, Muriel. Now we're talking the chicken from outer space. A commotion happens, and Courage notices a UFO. He goes to the chicken coop to see a chicken from outer space choking all the chickens. Yes, I know. Low-hanging fruit. I had to take it, right? Just like Johnny, you gotta shoot your shots. Courage tries to alert Muriel and Muriel's husband, Eustace, but to them, it just looks like a regular chicken. We see Eustace break out his courage-scaring mask to torture Courage. All while screaming, you make me look bad. Booga 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 booga. Sends Courage into a tizzy, gets him scared, runs off. Now, during the scene, the chicken from outer space has removed all of the chickens that he's effectively choked out. 
all Muriel and all used to see is a regular chicken and she just happens to take two eggs from the chicken coop, white and red speckled. She's frying these up for breakfast for Eustace and her. And then as Eustace goes to consume these eggs, as you see Courage freaking out in the window, you see Eustace starting to get sick. Then he turns into a crazed chicken. Now, as Courage is effectively losing, losing his mind with worry for the safety of Muriel, he then goes to all lengths to stop this chicken and stop Eustace. We see slingshots. We see fencing. We see chess. We see a holding your breath match. Eventually, everything is literally thrown at this chicken. And what effectively does the chicken in is the blowback from his ray gun. Now we see the same ray gun used on Eustace, which turns him into a pile of ash and then a mouse eats a piece. His eyes turn red, and this effectively sets us up for a sequel. Courage is one of those shows that would go down to invade our dreams and inspire our nightmares for generations to come. The show, as well as the score and soundtrack, are synonymous with each other, and will go down as two of the greatest one-two punches in my book of all time. Now, let's do a couple of our honorable mentions. Three come to mind in particular, and we'll start with Mean and the Count. Created by My Life as a Teenage Robot creator, Rob Renzetti. It's about a vampire begrudgingly at first befriending a little girl when he swoops into the wrong house at night. This one, beautifully shot. I mean, I've never seen something at that time as beautiful as this. The colors, the choices they used, you know, the acting that was done in this, the writing was superb. You know, I felt like this is what made me fall in love with UPA before I knew what UPA was. The next one up is Fat Cats and Drip Dry Drips, directed by John McClenahan. It follows Brother Louie and Elmo as they are running a laundromat. The President of the United States, pretty sure it's Bill Clinton, uh, just because of the time, the way it was, just, it's Bill, drops off his suit. Horrible things happen and laughter is had by all except Louie, unfortunately. We would see Louie actually get stitched to, this, to the suit. We would see Elmo not taking the proper size requirements, and my all-time favorite scene in this short, pieces of cows swinging by on the conveyor belt for the dry cleaning. And it's the last shot before everything really hits the fan, is Elmo has a cow with an X on his forehead and he's got a sledgehammer. It's just brilliant writing and animating done at its finest. While most of these shorts mentioned above have lived rent-free in our heads for decades and just permeated the zeitgeist. This short in particular is the short I think of when I think of what a cartoon. The next one on my list as an honorable mention is Pizza Boy No Tip created by Robert Alvarez. It follows a teenage pizza boy working at his dad's pizzeria. We see the pizza boy literally fight off gators, polar bears, fish, magnets that come for his braces, and so much more. He has to overcome and get his pizza to the North Pole before the time runs out. Needless to say, the customer is not too happy and doesn't like the pizza at the end of the day, so no tip is given, hence the title of this pilot. Pizza Boy for sure goes straight Jack Torrance from The Shining with the harpoon. We ended up seeing the guy's pet polar bear turned into a rug. All in all, there are so many shorts and folks that we just could not cover. If you like this video and you want to see more, I would love to do more, more videos like this. Um, we could delve deeper into the 40 or so that we did not get to do. If we didn't cover a short that was one of your favorites, let us know in the comment section below and drop your favorite on and tell us why that one sticks out so much to you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, this has been Julian and this has been another piece of your childhood. Good night.